In my last video, I created a web API which uses basic authentication to authenticate a web application. And here I wrote a middleware which is for handling the basic authentication. It checks the authorization header and from the authorization header, it figures out the user ID and password which are encoded. And then if it matches a user ID password, it works fine. Otherwise, it just returns an unauthorized error. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to create a .NET client which is going to use the basic authentication to authenticate against this server. In the last video, I only showed how to use this from a postman, but in a day-to-day -day life, we would probably be accessing web services or web APIs which are authenticated using basic authentication from a C-sharp client. So for that, first let me start running this application. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new console application and I can name it as basic auth test. And this is the console application where we are going to create the client for this basic authenticated web API. And I'm going to use .NET 7 for the client as well. Once the application is started, Right now the application is running in port 7264. So what we are going to do first is here, we're going to declare the URL. And the URL is localhost 7264. So I'm just going to copy paste this and get rid of this one then next for username for the username we had a hard-coded username here which is john so we'll put that and similarly for password we had a hard-coded password of password so we're going to use that for username and password the next what we can do is we can create an HTTP client. Create an HTTP client here. And we're going to set the base address of the HTTP client with this URL. And once we are done with that, next is where we are going to set the authentication. So for that, what we can do is we can do client dot default request headers dot authorization and here in this place for the authorization we're going to create new authentication header value and for the scheme we're going to use basic and then for the password, what we are going to do is we are going to use convert dot to base 64 string. Remember the user ID and password are both base 64 encoded string. And then for the actual value of user ID and password, we're going to use enco encoding dot ski dot get bytes and for the bytes here what we are going to do is if you remember the username and password are colon separated so it's username and then colon password that is how we'll need to pass and then what we can do is we can say var response is equal to client.get async just to wait, wait here 
and for the path because we have already declared the base address we just have to use the path and the path is weather forecast that's the path so we can use slash weather forecast that's our path and then what we can do is we can check if response dot is success code which is what we expect then we can do var content is equal to response dot content dot read a string async and let's put an await here and after that we can just do console dot write line of content that's about it and if it is a failure then we can do console dot write line response dot status code let's just print out the status code so now let's try running it i'm going to put a breakpoint here so that we can see if there is any issue so once we run this we can debug through the code and then here we created the http client we set the base address to the uri and here we are using the username colon the password and then we are converting into byte and then base64 string and passing it as an authorization header if we call it here we can see response status code is true and the content came back with the proper JSON that we expect, which is the weather JSON. And that's about it. And this is where we printed out the output from the service. So as you can see, it is extremely simple to use basic authentication header and using basic authentication mechanism to authenticating uh, endpoint. Now here, if we just comment this out, and this time I'm just going to run it instead of debugging. And once I run this, this time we should get an error and we can see that we got the status code of unauthorized. We printed out the status code so unauthorized is what we are getting back from server. Now let's change the code back and show you that once we change it back and run, it is going to work as expected. And this is where we see the data. So this is in a nutshell, how we can create a .NET client for connecting to a web API, which is using basic authentication mechanism. And as you can see, it is extremely simple. Now in a real life, scenarios the url is going to come from config file and the username and password is probably going to come from a secret vault and then it is going to be passed to the header so that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video